Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Will and welcome to my channel where I discuss all things credit card rewards. So go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button. In this video, I wanted to do a comparison on all the, I guess you can say, entry level hotel credit cards. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. All right, so here are the four cards that we will be looking at. The World of Hyatt, the Hilton Ascend, which will be name changed to the Surpass pretty soon, the Marriott Bonvoy Balance Card, and the IHG Premier Card. You'll see that all these cards are offered by Chase except for that Hilton card, which is an Amex card. So here you see all cards have an annual fee of roughly $95. That IHG card is sitting at $89, but this will just show you that we'll be comparing cards roughly at the same level, kind of low tier hotel cards. So here we have the point valuations for these reward programs. And we're definitely gonna be using this later on in a video. So I wanted to make sure I had this up front. So with the Hyatt, we'll be getting 1.7 cents per point, Hilton 0.6, Marriott 0.8, and IHG 0.5. Now all of these point valuations are from the point guide as of June 2019. Now if you're not sure how point valuations come to be, go ahead and pause on this next slide. It's just a quick little walkthrough with some examples on how these uh, valuations are calculated. So as you can see, point valuations are pretty subjective. It depends on which hotel you're staying at, when you're staying at that hotel, which type of room you're getting. A lot comes into play on determining point valuations. Like for me personally, I do value World of Hyatt more than this because just based on my experience, I've gotten over two cents per point. Same thing with Marriott, I usually get closer to one, 1.1 cents per point. I really don't have too much experience with Hilton or IHG. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna leave it with the point guy as our reference just to keep things even. So with that, you can see that the World Hyatt definitely comes out on top with 1.7 cents per point. That will essentially give you a boost when you go to redeem those points, whereas the other three cards, with them being below one cents per point, will actually give you a devaluation when you go to redeem those points that you've earned. So here we have the sign-up bonuses as of June 2019. These definitely could change if you're watching this in the future, but with the World of Hyatt cards, you'll get 50,000 points after you spend $6,000 in six months. And based on that point valuation we just went through, that's gonna be worth roughly $850. So you get a 14% return on that $6,000 that you spent. With the Hilton card, you'll get 130,000 points once you spend $2,000 in three months. And that's $780 in value or 39% return on that $2,000 in spend. With the Marriott card, it's 75,000 points after $2,000 in spend, which is about $600 or 30% return on your spend. And finally, the IHG card will give you 80,000 points after $2,000 in spend, which is worth $400 or 20% return on your spend. Now the winner here for me is going to be that Hilton card. Now you do get more with the Hyatt card, but the fact that you only had to spend $2,000 for that 40% return on your spend is a big deal. Because for me, I can easily hit that minimum spend very quickly and move on to another card that I may be working on for the sign-up point bonus. So again, the $850 is good, but I'd rather have that you know, slightly less valuation and able to start working on other sign-up bonuses. All right, guys, so the next thing that we're going to discuss is the spend bonus categories. And this is probably the most complicated thing that we're going to discuss in this video. So with the World of Hyatt, you'll get nine points back on Hyatt spend, two points back on transit and commuting. So think trains as well as ride shares, two points back on restaurants, cafes, coffee shops, airline tickets booked directly with the airlines, gym memberships, and one point back on everything else. With Hilton, you get 12 points back at Hilton, six points back at the restaurants, supermarkets, gas stations, and three points back everywhere else. And then with the Marriott, you get six points back when you spend at Marriott, two points back on everything else. IHG, it's 25 points back at IHG, two points back on gas, grocery, and restaurants. Now, the thing is that you can directly compare these. Apples to oranges here, guys. Each point are gonna be worth differently. So what I've done in this next slide is I've took those point valuations that we discussed earlier in this video, and I applied it to those spin bonus categories. And what that does, it will show you the value that you get when you redeem those points that you earn. So let's look at World of Hyatt as an example. With those two points back that you got with restaurants and cafes, when you go to actually redeem those points that you earned in that category, you'll actually get 3.4 cents in value. And that's because of the point valuation being above one cent per point, it gives you a little bit of a boost when you go to actually redeem those points. 
Now it's gonna be the opposite for these other three cards which have a point valuation below one cent per point. So looking at the Hilton card, you get six points back at restaurants, but when you go to actually redeem those points, you're only gonna get about 3.6 cents in value. So that's how this slide works, guys. It just puts everything on an even playing field on when you go to actually redeem your points to make it more comparable. So if I was just looking at this in a vacuum, I would have to give it to either the World of High or the Hilton. It just kind of depends on what's more important to you. They're very similar, not too much difference. I mean, if you're someone that uses Uber or Rideshare a lot or takes the you know, public transportation, you may want to get the World of High card. If you're someone that drives a lot, maybe you are a Uber driver, you may want to get the Hilton card. Now going back to that previous slide, I just want to discuss one little thing. So you'll see here at the bottom, I've listed out the bank transfer partners. So these are the banks that you can transfer points from to these hotel programs. So with the World of Hyatt, you can transfer points from your Chase Ultimate Rewards account to World of Hyatt at, one, at a one-to-one -one ratio. With Amex, you can transfer points to Hilton at a one-to-two ratio. So you can actually get a 100% uh, boost there. With the Marriott card, it's a one-to-one -one ratio from Chase or Amex and IHG is a one-to-one -one ratio from Chase. Now this is very important because say you are in the Chase ecosystem, maybe you have the Trifecta or My Quadfecta system, a Sapphire card, Freedom Unlimited, Freedom card. Well, you'll probably be earning points in these categories already using those cards. So it really doesn't make too much sense to spend in categories in which the Chase Ultimate Rewards program already has because Chase Ultimate Reward points are more valuable because of their flexibility and the ability to transfer those points to the Hyatt already. Same thing with the Hilton card. Say that you have the Amex Gold card. Well, you do earn four points back on restaurants and supermarkets, which is less points than Hilton, but just remember, it's a one to two transfer ratio. So those four points that you're transferring to Hilton will actually be worth eight Hilton points. So you'll be making two points more with that spin when you compare it to the Hilton card. So next we'll be discussing the anniversary free night. So this is just a free night that you get on the anniversary of your card. So with the World of Hyatt, you do get a free night up to 15,000 points, which is worth roughly $255. Now with the Hilton Honors, you don't get anything unfortunately, but I will say this, they do have other benefits that will make up for it later on. Next you have the Marriott card, which will give you a free night up to 35,000 points, which is worth roughly $280. And then finally the IHG card will give you a free night up to 40,000 points, which is worth $200. Now, if I had to choose a winner, it's really hard to say. I'm just going to give it to all three that actually give you a benefit here because they're really all about equal. It just kind of depends on which hotel that you prefer. And I honestly don't have too much of a preference. All I can say is that I haven't stayed at, at an IHG in a while, but I'll still give it the benefit of the doubt. The next category that we're looking at is the free reward night. So what this is, is if you stay at the hotel a certain amount of nights using reward points, they'll give you a free night. So with the high card, unfortunately they do not have this, but they do at times do offer promos that will give you this. With the Hilton card, you get their fifth reward night free. Same thing with the Marriott card. And finally with the IHG card, you'll get the fourth reward night free. So I'm going to go ahead and give this to IHG just because it's a little bit more flexible with that fourth night. I know personally, I don't always stay at a location for more than three or four nights. So having that flexibility of not having to, you know, stay an extra night that I don't want to just to use this reward is still a very great benefit for me but I could very well get this to Hilton and Marriott as well for just having that option. So next we have the additional free night. So yes, another free night benefit, but this one is a little bit different. This one is based on your spin. So with the World of Hyatt and the Hilton card, once you spend a certain amount, they'll give you a free night. Unfortunately, the Marriott and IHG cards do not offer this. Now with the World of Hyatt card, once you spend $15,000 within a year, they'll give you an extra free night, just like your anniversary night, category one through four, or up to 15,000 points, which is worth about $250. So if you think about it that way, you're gonna get about 1.5% return on that $15,000 that you spent. Now, is it worth it? I personally don't think it is for the Hyatt card. And that's just because you have other cards that will give you the same return rate on your spend, such as the Ink Unlimited card, as well as the Freedom Unlimited card. And again, the Chase Ultimate Reward Points are more flexible, so therefore more valuable. 
Now the Hilton card is a little bit different. So once you hit that $15,000 within a year, you'll get a free weekend reward night. So the free weekend reward night can be used at pretty much any Hilton property. There are only a handful of exclusions, like maybe 20 or so. So with that, you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of value that can be found. So your mileage may vary, but here I have the Conrad Bora Bora, which is my go-to hotel to look at for value with the Hilton. And you see that I found, I found a standard room reward rate for next June on a Sunday, so weekend reward, right? And it will cost me roughly $800 if I were to normally book this room, but I'm getting it for free once I hit that $15,000 in spend. So in terms of that return, it's about five to 6% return on your spend. So a lot of value can be had with this card. So you may want to look into some possible places that you may want to stay within the next year or two and see if it's worth putting the spend on this card. So the obvious winner for this is going to be that Hilton card. So the next benefit that we're going to look at is the status that each card grants you. So what I've done here is I've just listed some of the main benefits that you get with each status. There are definitely more than this, but I would say these are the key ones that most people look for. So with the world of high, you'll get discovery status and the best benefit that I can really point out was the late checkout. With Hilton, you get gold status and with that, you get late checkout, free breakfast, as well as a possible room upgrade. With Marriott, you have silver status, which gives you late checkout. and IHG, you'll have platinum status, will give you late checkout as well as a possible room upgrade. So this one's pretty obvious. Hilton definitely takes it with that free breakfast. That is usually a big benefit that a lot of people are looking for when they have status. All right guys, for these next two benefits, I'm not gonna spend too much time on them. It's travel protection and purchase protection. I personally don't really use these benefits, but I guess it's nice to have, and I do think some people do care about it quite a bit. But I will just say this right now, for travel protection, World of Hyatt and IHG definitely come out on top. They have quite a bit actually i was pretty surprised at how much they had i was surprised that marriott didn't have uh as much as these other two because they're all chase cards so i would expect the marriott card to offer the same but it did not with purchase protection the world of high card also comes out on top here it just has everything that these other cards have plus a little bit more uh, ISG is pretty close, but I think it's missing one or two things. So the next benefit that we're looking at is airport lounge access. And the only card that will give you this is the Hilton card, which will give you 10 priority pass and lounge visits per year. So this is the main benefit that this card gives you instead of that free night reward that other cards give you. This can be very valuable depending on who you are and what other cards you have in your wallet. If you don't have any other cards that give you lounge access and you really need lounge access, this could probably be worth more than that free night that the other cards can offer you. So say you were to use up all 10 and you value each visit at $30 per visit. Say you just get a lot of food, you spend a lot of time in there, uh, you get a lot of drinks. You know, $30 is pretty reasonable, I think. Then, well, that's $300 in value every year, which is more than the value that you get on those free nights with the other cards. Next benefit is the Global Entry TSA Pre-Check Credit. And again, this is only on one card and that is the IHG card. Now, I think this is less impressive than the lounge access just because so many cards actually have this nowadays. I personally wouldn't really care too much because I think I have like three or four other cards. But, you know, if you're just picking up one card, this may be your only travel credit card. Hey, this is the easy way to get it. So guys, we come to the end with our final tally. And as you can see, the Hilton card takes it all with six wins. Four of those wins are just straight up wins in which it didn't tie with any other card in any other categories. The Hyatt and ING card come in second place, but if I were to say what is the tiebreaker, the ING card didn't win more individual categories than the Hyatt card. So I guess that would be second, and then Hyatt card would be third. And then Marriott is in dead last. It only got two wins, and those wins were just ties with the annual fee and anniversary free night. So guys, this is all very subjective. It just depends on how you weigh each of these categories and what's important to you. I personally have the Hilton Aspire card, but I do plan on getting all of the Hilton cards just because Amex allows you to do that and get all the sign-up point bonuses. I have the Marriott card with Chase. I have the Marriott Business card with Amex. I plan on getting the Hyatt card at some point this year. And ING, it's not really on my radar. I don't need Global Entry TSA. And the free reward night sounds nice, but and I'll already, I'll already have three other cards. So I probably won't get the ING, but let me know down in the comments which card you think is best and why. And thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to smash that like button. Share with anyone you think this may help. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.